Hello. Hi, can you turn off the recording? Uh, it's recording already. No, it doesn't start until you start the broadcast. Ah, okay, okay. I'm just gonna pull it up. Yeah, five people, sorry. <laughs> just pulling up the latest. Okay, so when you're ready, just start the broadcast and pull the presentation up. Yeah, I'm just doing that. Gosh, I thought you sent it. Uh, I miss. Where's the final one? Is it? Did you email it or is it? Uh, yeah. You got it. I got it. it says three. Mhm. Mm oh, it takes me forever to log in. I need to have a better way of logging in. I put a link. In. Okay, let's get started. Sorry, we're five minutes late. That sucks. Let me start one, two, three. Good morning and good day, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining our first in a series of webinars for 2020. Hope the new year is safe and full of success for everyone. Um, so today's topic, um, is around risk management using safe pass predictive analytics also known as advanced analytics um so you know uh, it's a new year and we're thinking about the trends in the market there's something some exciting areas that we have adopted um working busy last year um you know in terms of latest technologies that help you identify risk improve your bottom line so we'd like to uh, share that. There's more details available in our newsletter that'll be going out in the next uh, few days. Um, and you can check that on our website. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about this new year, especially um, you know the year being 2020, of course, we've got to talk about insight, right? So, um, and so this presentation is really about helping you uh, identify risk and predict it before it becomes uh, materializes basically, right? And if you think about our history, you know, over the last 10 plus years, um, I've been involved with helping customers identify uh, access risks and predicting, you know, um, in terms of uh, policy violations that can potentially lead to financial risk. And we have since then done a lot of work on our platform to, um, to really build that predictive capability in the tool. And so now with uh, machine learning and AI and our ability to perform large amounts of data very quickly with our upgrades and, and, and so forth, we can now identify and detect risk. Um, even faster and help you improve your business. So that's sort of the theme of today's presentation. Um, put together a quick agenda, a very brief introduction. Most of uh, you hopefully know us, so read more about us on our uh, website, especially the resource page where these webinars go is very useful. So please take a look at that. Um, and um, I have Emma, our marketing manager on the phone as well. Uh, so Emma, if uh, we can post this out there like you always do, that'd be great. Yeah, sure. um, and at the end, Emma will um, close out with some next steps. Um, also, if you have any questions, please uh, post those in the chat box. We'll take those towards the end of the meeting today, and uh, we will um, we'll, uh, we'll open it up for questions at the end. Emma will read those out. Okay, so the agenda is, like I said, you can you probably read it by now. So basically, we wanted to, um, uh, you know, the headline is too much data, not enough analytics, and that's a, a sort of a theme that we have heard for the last few years from our customers. Um, you know, we've all been hearing buzzwords like big data and analytics and so forth. So what does that mean to our customers and uh, folks that run finance organizations and enterprise responsible for the enterprise and, and large IT organizations? Uh, so that's kind of where the vision comes in, right? Like what should be the vision? What should be uh, the new thing, new, new thing for 2020, right? And then um, talk a little bit about how SafePass can assist you with your vision, help you build out a roadmap. If you already have a roadmap, where does SafePass fit into that roadmap, which milestone and so forth. And ultimately, as always, we like to talk about a real world story, which is the main reason for joining these things, because our goal is to bring insight from the real world to you uh, on lessons we have learned. So great time to get started on, on insight, uh, Safe Insight, and I'll talk about that in a brief minute. Um, a little bit about this year, as I mentioned, the newsletter is a great source to learn more about us and then follow up with us if you have any area of interest um, through our LinkedIn and other contact uh, portals. 
Um, again, you know, one of the things that we're doing this year, as always, is going out, meeting uh, our customers at various events throughout the uh, areas where we, we serve uh, the market. Um, so, um, you know, U.S. obviously being our biggest, but also uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, and so forth. You'll see us there through various events. And if you just like to join us online, this is the best forum for us to communicate. And we're doing more and more uh, of that online in the, through our user groups, and you'll see more activity there as more uh, as our team grows and they're more involved in helping. Um, so our insight and our knowledge that we share with you comes uh, uh, with, with all the respect to our customer base, 200 plus uh, uh, positive, that has really taught us what we know. Uh, the problems we have uh, heard from our customers really is the value of SafePass. And so that's what we create, is take that knowledge that we have learned in the market, apply that technology to it and solve problems. And so we're really honored to have some of the top companies across all major regions geographic regions and industry regions in the world uh, be, be uh, you know, have honored us to be uh, part of their organization. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then uh, just a little bit about, um, you know, what's the, let me just kind of level set the issue, right? So you, you've all, I'm sure you're on this webinar, you've heard about this topic uh, through other sources. So what is, uh, what is, from our perspective, what are we seeing? Um, so I thought I'd start with some basic numbers, right? Why, uh, why the current uh, process doesn't work? Why are people struggling with data? And this is based on research that's done by, as you can see at the bottom, uh, my resources are IDC, HBR, and so forth. So you can see that this is uh, accredited and independent review. And I think it's intuitive also, right? So for example, 37% of analysts uh, uh, say that uh, you know, analyst time is uh, spent on uh, just searching for data. And I, I, I'm, I'm guilty of that myself, right? Uh, when I'm putting together a report, for example, our KPI reports for our internal management <clears throat> planning, I go through many different systems. I go through Salesforce, I go through our accounting systems, I go through our uh, you know, product uh, management and support management system. So data is, is everywhere. And to, uh, to make sense of it and get uh, good business insight, you have to bring that together. And that's a lot of time lost if you think about it. And if you can do anything to help improve that, uh, we'll, we'll, we're here to do that. And that's what we're doing ourselves internally, right? Um, and then uh, as a second point to the right, in the top right coordinate, you'll see that 60% of the analysts also spend uh, looking for data in, in five or more places. Uh, and I'm one of them, frankly, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a victim of this. So the solution is really for us and for our customers, you know, because we just can't rely on, uh, our data is everywhere, right? So we can't rely on a single data source and, you know, close our eyes and think that we got all the, all the results we need. You have to validate, you have to uh, verify and so forth. So you need uh, multiple sources. Um, and our customers, I see the same thing, right? You've got an ERP system, you've got a CRM system, you've got, uh, you know, many, many operational systems, HR, and, and they may even be in the same, some of them may even be in a single uh, platform, but even that platform is split out in many cases, whether you're using SAP, Oracle, et cetera. Uh, I mean, there's a, there is transformation projects out there that I'm talking to customers where some things are in cloud, some things are on premise, there are various data protection policies, that restrict you from data being everywhere. So you know you've got to you've got to look at those data sources. Um, and then as a result of that, the most shocking number, of course, is that 60 billion, right, with a B, um, is spent on manual modeling. And what that means is basically uh, extracting data from all these sources, uh, identifying those data sources, to, uh, the elements, the objects, as we call it here uh, at SafePass, um, and then basically correlating them into a into something useful of a model that you can monitor, whether it's a performance of a process or uh, financial statements, et cetera. You know, be able to model that month after month as part of your period and process or a daily process if possible, which uh, as you can see is very costly. 13% uh, is um, uh, the solution that even, you know, make through all these hurdles, don't make it out and to get deployed. And, and that's, uh, that's, again, to me makes sense because you know, if you're going to spend that kind of money and the complexity, the reliability on the data and the need to maintain it with human intervention is too high. So someone leaves the organization, they get job changes and one weakest link breaks in, in your data chain. And as a result of that, you lost the insight, you know, so that's, 
that's that's how it sums up the the challenge uh, for for the market and for certainly for our customers in brief what they're telling us. So what are the challenges? Let's drill in a little bit more. I like I found this. Uh, I was googling it something and I found this um, and I credit that. So it says uh, instead of budgeting um, um, to our strategy, you can read this uh, to our strategy. Our time is basically spend linking um, those correct cells in the spreadsheets and formulas. And that's true, 90% of the spreadsheets have some uh, functional letters, right? So it's challenging and you're here you are, you know, getting in front of the board or executives or your team and explaining how you're gonna perform a certain process and execute certain strategy and your numbers don't add up. It's pretty embarrassing. And, and so what happened is, you know, let's look at some of the root causes. What are the challenges? Why is it so hard to, to get it all done spreadsheets? Um, it's basically a spreadsheet hell, right? I mean, uh, you, you're basically made, uh, extracting data from various data sources, putting them into pivot tables, building these nice graphs, but one cell changes and then you got to redo everything. So it's a circular loop. Um, many teams spend time building custom solutions. So you then graduate from the spreadsheet into, let's say, putting things in a database. You put a you know, maybe an access database, a more sophisticated database or a BI tool. And uh, uh, now you've got, um, you know, some challenges in extraction capabilities, right? So you're, extra you're as good as your ability to extract that data on a timely manner, merge it, you know, basically perform that ETL. Uh, many times it's just manually done. Um, and, and so as a result of that, the last challenge, the bottom line challenge is about the source of truth. You know, uh, we are, uh, as, as financial executives paid to, um, uh, to, to ensure the accuracy and the correctness of financial results that are being reported to management, audit firms, et cetera. So, you know, being able to rely on that is critical. So what uh, invariably happens is, uh, you know, you got to tick and tie all the data that you've extracted from source systems back to those source systems. And by the time you do that, it's not a single, you know, um, form of truth anymore. So, uh, a big challenge, and therefore we're in this uh, spreadsheet hell, as, the, as, as we say here. Um, so from there, you sophisticate, you get a little more sophisticated. You go to this, um, you know, basically you call yourself big data. You start looking at SQL queries against your data sources or some, uh, you know, star schema and so forth. If you're using data warehouse, and now you're IT dependent, right? You got specialized skills that you're taking away from servicing your customers and your employees and your partners to basically dedicating those resources to reorganizing the data you already have. And they're doing that a significant portion of their time. So let's say 30 or 40% of your budget, if you think about it, is being spent on reporting, which is what I've heard from our clients, right? And you can look at your own organization to create a business case. I mean, the purpose of today's session is to help you create a business case for a better way of analyzing this problem solving them. So yeah, and so the manual search is then labor intensive, I think pretty obvious, very time consuming. Um, and and uh, it's a sampling approach because as soon as you take that sample, you know, something changes. So a month later, if you were making decisions based on that sample, that may not be correct sample and someone else may have a different version of that same sample. In, the, in other words, a different set of uh, facts or truths, which will create conflict as well. You know, I've been in organization where two silos are fighting each other because um, because they have different uh, sets of truths that they have uh, made their conclusions of, right? So it creates that friction in the organization, slows down the process and performance. And, and lack of you know response times, the last point is pretty critical here too, is no alerts monitoring or point in time. So you do all this extraction, you put it out there into a BI tool, um, and get these nice dashboards, but um, you know people uh, maybe forget they're busy, they don't look at them, and now critical factors change. Like you've run out of a key chemical in your uh, in your product uh, manufacturing process, manufacturing whether you're delivering food or 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 other uh, items. Like a, think think of a customer that has um, um, that uh, provides. Um, you know, a chemical industry that provide uh, finished goods for large organizations to uh, clean um, large buildings. And, and if one of the elements runs out in the recipe, um, they can't recognize any revenue because they can't push the product out. So that's just an example that comes to my mind. Um, and again, you know, we can advance from there to more uh, advanced scripting languages. For example, ACL 
is a tool most of our, um, you know, I grew up with audit and so forth. So auditors have used that for many years and um, continues to be a good point solution. Um, and uh, and you'll see a little bit later in the presentation how we can take some of the work you've already done, leverage that, and pull that into SafePass to help you create better insight and make it more of an automated, streamlined process. So again, ACL scripts are another way of um, extracting and analyzing data uh, into spreadsheets. And uh, the technology, is, of course, legacy has been around for 20 plus years. Um, so it's time in 2020 to look at what's available and modernize your business uh, as, as companies move to a digital platform, right? So in a, in a nutshell, what happens when we have all these challenges with data and analyzing that information in spreadsheets, um, the question becomes for the strategic folks as this, or, this group has identified, um, it, where are you spending your time as an organization? Are you focusing on outdated tools and they're keeping you from achieving those strategic objectives or not? And so this was a study done that shows, you know, the the breakdown in our in our system. So on the left, you can you can read this is a likelihood of occurrence and executive time spent. So 86% is something have to do with strategic risk. The likelihood of that uh, causing an impact on your business is very high, but you're only able to spend 6% of the time there. Um, on the on the bottom, you'll see that on financial reporting, you're spending 39% of your time whereas the risk is only 2%. So because the data is overwhelming and is growing and there are many data sources, you end up staying at the bottom of this pyramid in terms of risk categories. And you miss out on operational risk and strategic risk, which is where you squeeze your, um, you know, your competition, you increase your, your value, your equity and so forth in your, in, your, in your enterprise. And that's not happening because you're too busy solving spreadsheet problems. Um, and, and so the companies have to step out and this is a great year to do that, okay? So what we help you do is basically streamline the process, make it more um, automated, standardized, and there are many different ways of achieving that depending on your pain points. So we'll cover a few of those examples today. And ultimately what we hope to accomplish is give you a way to, you know, freeing up your resources to address strategic issues, and that's where you can create new opportunities for your organization, right? So what is, what should be, what, what are some of the roadmaps and vision that we are hearing for the enterprise in 2020? Um, and so let's take a look at um, some information here. So sorry about a lot of text here, but I, I wanted to just lay things out because there's a lot of uh, noise and confusion about what analytics mean. So I wanted to get some bases right um, using um, you know, terms that uh, we can all uh, get on the same page with. Um, so what is data analytics? What is predictive analytics? So I wanted to just define that. Um, and this is what the analysts are, you know, has consensus around these areas that I've identified. So predictive analytics is basically a category of analytics, right? No surprise there. And then basically it helps you predict the future outcomes based on your historical data, analytics techniques, and so forth. It's typically based on statistical analysis. We also call it data sciences or machine learning. Um, the science of predictive analytics can generate future insights, right? And that's what's so important to us uh, for our customers that they should be able to uh, we get a better foresight because in, historically we have built, uh, by we I mean IT uh, market uh, and vendors have created products that are really about looking in the rear view mirror and we've been blamed for that, right? That yeah, I can look at the aging reports very helpful, but it tells me, you know, what happened 90 days ago. Um, it's, it's a mirror that sees in the past. What customers have always demanded is, well, what I'd like to be able to do is look at the future better so I can make better decisions. And that's what data science does in terms of predictive analytics. And that's where safe site is built for us to protect you against future risks, as well as other products that we have, which protect you against current and past risks. And if you can uh, look at the trends, uh, you can get there. So the way predictive analytics works, it looks at a uh, current data and looks at the trend uh, in behaviors over days, years, or milliseconds, and, and uses that uh, information to predict um, predict um, future results. So I think a, a very common implementation of this is Wall Street, where predictive analytics helps you 
uh, make decisions about stock purchases based on news, uh, current news, uh, future trends, and so forth, uh, where we have uh, trading happening through machines using predictive analytics. Uh, organization can exploit patterns, right? So you can see a pattern of risk and opportunity in your own business model. So it's very contextual, right? And that, which is where safe path shines. I mean, we build um, uh, our technology on very contextual, granular understanding of your objects uh, that make up your business processes. Um, so modeling is very important. And uh, discovering the relationship between um, those objects and the behaviors um, uh, of you know, external factors is really important. Uh, so that's basically why predictive analytics is um, a better way um, to look at big data uh, because there's so many data points now that we can't simply look them in a simple spreadsheet and, and so forth, just like we couldn't can't do accounting on a spreadsheet. Okay, and, and it's growing, right? So this validates um, the market adoption. Uh, Zion Market Research uh, says that. Uh, this market is growing at 21%, 20, yeah, 21%, and expected to be about almost 11 billion by 2022, just in the next couple of years. Um, so we're right in the middle of this transformation, and many of the customers have started uh, with something uh, in place, or they're experimenting with it. They're doing some early adopter projects, and now they're thinking about applying that to a mass scale uh, across the enterprise, and that's where SafePass comes in. Uh, SafePass also provides that uh, predictive analytics um, uh, by, you know, customers like to do cloud or on-premise. So that's been a debate that's still unfortunately out there, although I think it's, uh, in my mind, it's been one and customers um, are primarily looking at cloud. Uh, but for various reasons, you know, you may want to look at on-premise, but clearly the market in the cloud is growing uh, a lot faster. Uh, again, a no-brainer, you would have guessed that, I'm sure. Um, and so predictive analytics is growing faster. Um, it can be classified into these different intelligence platforms according to this um, uh, research organization, Zion Market, where I got this information from. So that's adoption and that validates um, essentially the business case or business drivers that we just talked about. And so to kind of wrap it up, I mean, what are the benefits? Uh, if you were to take this to your management and say, look, we want to start Insight, what, where would you start? What would you benefit from? So this is some of the benefits our customers have recognized over the years. And I've, like I said, I've got a case study uh, to share with you in a bit as well. Uh, so basically uh, it makes your information and your decision-making, I would say, more accurate and reliable um, than just looking in the rear view mirror or type scenario where you're looking at historical data and trying to extrapolate based just on the historical data. It's important to have access to historical data but you also should have access to other factors that influence that historical data, um, such as external environments and so forth. Um, second bullet point there is uh, inventory example again is uh, these are just benefits examples may or maybe may not be relevant to all of you, but inventory requirements, managing shipment schedules. You know, basically, if you're a distributor or manufacturing company, um, you want to set your pricing based on past tra trends. Uh, to you know at what price point people purchased or walked away. Uh, if you're trying to compete with Amazon, you know, these are the time, type of things that Amazon is using. Um, so, you know, moving to a digital platform, you've got to have predictive analytics as well as part of that framework. Um, uh, the third bullet point, generate new customer responses or purchases as well as promote cross-sell opportunities, right? So um, I ordered a T-shirt um, from Amazon and they find something very similar. Again, that's predictive analytics because it's, it's, it's assuming my behavior based on a predictive model, uh, based on my profile and previous purchases. Um, and then uh, detecting various, uh, you know, on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the risk side, criminal behavior and, and damage uh, can possibly impact it because of that behavior. So it can be used by law enforcement. Uh, it can be used by government agencies to, um, uh, to protect uh, its citizens and and its um, constituents. Um, and the last point is around behavior and actions um, to limit fraud and cyber attacks. So uh, some of our uh, access management technology leverages the same um, insight to identify, for example, which risk is more likely to be materialized in terms of, let's say, your procure to pay cycle, where uh, what's the likelihood somebody might pay a supplier uh, just because they've had access 
um, to uh, suppliers and bank accounts, as an example. So lots of different use cases. Uh, some of those are across the board, others are industry specific. And like I said, please reach out to us for um, anything specific to your uh, industry. Okay, so if you transform, what's the you know rain uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, like they say? Um, so modern analytics delivers actionable insight, and here are the results. Companies that have transformed, that's what the analysts are saying. Um, Aberdeen did a, um, a a study of companies that have made it through this insight uh, through the uh, analytics um, transformation, and you can see 76% of analytics users can work with data as they need it. So they can go to multiple data sources, and I'll explain that in our case study a little bit more, how you can do that with SafePass. Uh, you can also um, create new insight right, without the assistance of IT, since you don't have to rely on scripts and uh, ACL and spreadsheets. You can um, point and click into objects. You can pull out the elements you need, combine them in a format that you need to, and then make it automated. So click a button, make it a scheduled job that automatically runs. And you can do this all on your own as a business user without having to tie up 30 40% of the IT budget in just collecting and coalescing that data. Uh, the bottom left, uh, 66% can connect and consolidate. So you'll see in SafePass, we provide you something called data source uh, connections through Data Pro, which enables you to uh, make this a repeatable process. And then finally, the bottom right, 66% uh, also said that uh, they can now standardize and integrate um, source data with analytics, right? So it's a strong uh, business driver, these results speak for louder than anything else. So I think that's where you know we're excited about making a difference in customers' organization, making them successful with better insight in 2020. So how do we do that? Now let's get down to nuts and bolts a little bit, and we'll talk about a case study. Um, so as you know, we've always, uh, those of you that have followed us, we're about improving uh, information risk management. And there are many layers on this um, that we provide uh, you know, to, to help customers become more optimized from a risk management perspective, right? And so um, the, the predictive analytics can only be achieved if you have these foundational layers in place. Um, and so you've got to have good documentation a, a online for your audit and risk and compliance. So being able to uh, query your risk and control matrix and get, get into um, the various um, uh, you know, test plans that have been executed, controls that have been put in place, risks that have been assessed and all that. So that's the foundational layer that helps companies become, uh, move from a reactive to a, or informal to a more proactive and optimized stage. On top of that, we build really good access controls. You have to have identity understood really well in this day, day and age of cybersecurity and cyber risk. So you've got to be able to understand who's accessing what system. You can't have shared passwords. You can't have rogue accounts. And you can't have um, policy violations of your uh, company policy, whether it's trade secrets, segregation of duties. And that's a layer we have been building and serving our customers for the 10, 10 plus years uh, in various capacities. And so, and then on top of that, continuous monitoring. So now that we have good understanding of who's accessing what data, you know, how is that data being used? Right, so IT governance also includes continuous controls monitoring for us. And so being able to monitor, for example, somebody changed a key configuration, which now authorizes folks to pay purchase, purchase order over a certain amount that they shouldn't be because it was a, whether a mistake in the technology or human mistake. You know, basically we want to be able to catch that and correct that before that becomes a problem. So now you can see we're building all this data in these layers and layers of our platform. And that ultimately leads to a process control. So each of your processes, whether it's a financial close process, procure to pro uh, pay process, they all have controls in them. All these significant processes have controls in them. And uh, when these processes are executed, we can actually gather evidence about the effectiveness of those controls. And also with process controls, we can prevent, uh, if the evidence is such that our sampling shows that, you know, that evidence is such that it creates a risk, we can prevent that process step activity from occurring right from safe pass. And so that's a fantastic way for you to apply all the data that you have gathered building the layers below that. For example, the control you define in a control matrix at the very bottom layer, the user you have defined the second layer, and the monitoring that you've done at a third layer, and then apply all of that knowledge 
to really prevent risk from happening based on their knowledge. And the most exciting part, of course, is what we're talking today, which is predictive analytics. So I've described what that is, but what predictive analytics then lets us do is not only stop what's happening now, but also ap apply the same uh, lessons learned um, from your previous data to then pr uh, protect you against future um, risks uh, by using those patterns, hidden and, and, and obvious ones. And so that's where predictive analytics kind of builds on our platform. And, and, and so this has been a kind of a journey uh, for 10 plus years to get to that, this stage which we're talking about today. And our platform contains 30 some different products we have built over that time frame that enables us to um, accomplish this journey, right? And make this goal possible for you. Now you may have many of these pieces. I consider this as a Lego block. Um, you know, uh, you can pick and che choose which of those uh, Lego uh, bricks you already have which ones you need to add, and we mix and match using Data Probe. We integrate into almost everything. We have API services now as well. So you can, of course, use your current uh, risk control matrix in, let's say, sitting in a Archer or a metric stream or something else, and you, you know, and you can connect, hook into that. You don't have to replace everything. Um, you can pick and choose where the pain points are. So you can be very strategic and precise. And today's uh, focus, uh, for example, is risk analytics. Uh, process analytics and audit. And so some of these analytics on the top are part of Safe Insight. And you can see that once you have these layers in place, whether they're from SafePass or other sources, you can put layer up uh, your predictive analytics from Safe SafePass to Safe Insight to start getting this really useful information to not only prevent risk through process pass, but also predict it with Safe Insight. So that's the most ambitious uh, technology that we're bringing to the market and to our customers. So let's dig into Safe Insight Advanced. As I said, it's also known as Advanced Analytics. So let's take a look on what that is. Um, so in the interest of time, I'll move a little bit quickly. You will have access to these um, um, these slides uh, through uh, Emma. So the first thing that uh, our Advanced Analytics or Predictive Analytics is based on is really a, a rich rules repository. It's a meta-driven, a metadata-driven uh, global best practices, right? So I mentioned on the previous slide that we build it on the data and the context was it's uh, our customer, a single customer data. Now, since we're in the cloud and we have 200 plus customers, you can imagine that the value of that data is 200 X, right? So it's much more valuable when you can use metadata to predict, for example, a closed trend. How long would a certain financial services company that has presence in EMEA, Asia and US is taking to close their books in the US, right? That's very useful information for someone in finance, for example, a CFO that's trying to benchmark against their peers. So that's where the rules repository is very useful. You can apply those rules of best practices. We provide you that as part of the predictive analytics. And that's how you can address your bottlenecks and risks in your business using the risk rules repository, then data discovery, right? So as I mentioned, people waste a lot of time, billions of dollars really on spreadsheets and looking for data sources, connecting those data sources. So data discovery uh, as part of the advanced analytics enables you to uh, point our tool called Data Probe, which we've talked about at these different data sources that you see at the bottom. So whether it's the schema in your database, it's change records, it's user events, API, security data groups, and many other things that are the basic fundamental foundational level structures that you need to address and understand in order to uh, build out a useful um, analytics based on some rules and metadata. So metadata, I'll give you an example. Uh, for example, metadata may be a supplier, but that supplier in SAP is consist of like six different ABAP tables. In Oracle, it may consist of nine different um, you know, objects, uh, tables within Oracle. So there are two different ways, but they all uh, accomplish the same objective, which is um, you wanna be able to make sure your supplier has the correct um, tax information populated and their bank accounts are not changing very frequently. And if they are, there's a good reason. So that may be your objective uh, from advanced analytics, uh, but uh, to discover that data, you don't, you have to go hunt down hundreds of tables using scripts and we make that possible for you to do in minutes because all the 90% of the world's information is already uh, mapped by SafePass. Um, these are all the major ERP systems that customers use. So once you have discovered the data that you're interested in and let the, let the system do that, SafePass do that, and you apply the rules from the rules catalog, 
uh, or the rules repository, you're ready to analyze risks. So now you can use the capabilities within uh, SafePass, uh, our insight capabilities to apply different algorithms and methodologies, whether it's Benford analysis, whether it's mean analysis, some other data science or mathematical approach that you need to quantify that risk or qualify that risk uh, to address and predict the future of that risk and come up with a treatment plan for that risk. So all the risk analysis can now be done within SafePass um, using Safe Insight capabilities. Uh, the bottom three are your um, basically optimization. So once you know the risk, you go back and optimize the process. So remember I showed you that sheet where we have um, the risk analytics and then uh, the ability to go from there to um, to analyze the risk. And so that's the process optimization. And then from there, you can do better quantitative measurement. Now that you have this data about the risk around the process and you opt you've set optimizing goals, you've set key performance indicator for your process, for example, your customer churn ratio, your um, um, you know, supplier um, shipment times, um, you know, cost fluctuations on pricing, things like that, maybe your KPIs in those key processes like procure to pay, order to cash. Uh, and now you've uh, identified those, removed the bottlenecks, and now you're measuring them. And you can also simulate future changes using this capability. So you can play with the parameters. If I changed the KPI for, well, how many suppliers will drop off the list um, and what would impact that would have on my supply chain? So you can run those what if scenarios um, to see where can you optimize your business now, right? And that's the source of predictive analytics, leveraging the data groups you already have in, uh, in your various data sources. So uh, to take away from this, you know, how do we turn hidden risk into opportunities? We help you discover the data without wasting the time that you saw companies are wasting looking for five plus data sources and $60 billion in spreadsheets work. So we have saved you that effort to a large extent. Our studies show 75% um, of that effort can, can be re replaced uh, or removed um, through these technologies. Uh, we have given you the tools to then analyze the risk apply that to your current processes, and then optimize those processes. And once you optimize them, you can keep them optimized. So it's not a one-off, it's just part of your DNA of your business, because now you can simulate and improve this. Um, uh, SafePass works across multiple environments, so that's what makes it possible for us to uh, solve this problem. And as I mentioned in previous slides, that we uh, are out of the box, support 90% of world's information systems uh, where the critical information is stored, whether it's on premise or in the cloud. So various technology connections are available. Um, so we covered that. And so once you have uh, SafePass in place, uh, what that enables you to do is look at evidence of controls. This is more of a graphical view of what I just said on a couple of slides ago. Uh, so it basically tells you how you can now go against these data sources and in these data sources gather the control evidence, create an enterprise graph, the connections uh, and hidden connections and apply that to our engine, our AI enabled engine. Um, and then from there come up with um, a systematic reasoning based on the rules we just talked about, apply the al algorithms required like fuzzy matching or clustering or Benford analysis and then come up to this analytics. And that's what generates the analytics. So there's quite a bit of heavy lifting that's happening by technology, which is saving you all the time that you're doing, uh, you know, 30 to 40% of the time that your uh, IT department is spending today. And so they can do more strategic work for the organization um, to transform to a more of a digital platform servicing the customer and employees and partners better. Uh, and ultimately the incidents can be that, that are identified or cases can be identified, can be fed back into your graph so you're, you get smarter. You're, this is what machine learning is all about, right? Making this whole process uh, more uh, learn from, learn from its um, uh, incidents and get better at it. So this is where we can not only cover the um, input layers, but also we can identify new hidden layers through the loopback. And that's where deep learning comes from. Uh, so hidden layers um, can be uh, the non-human created path. So we go start with some of those rules that we've gathered and our search engines and our uh, heuristics have built over the experiences of our customers across the cloud, but also what you specifically bring to the table as a customer 
for your or, or organization, you apply that, and that's how you discover hidden links without involving you know thousands of hours of uh, spreadsheet and self uh, manipulation work. Uh, and then once you once you have these hidden links, then you can make better decisions and says correct decisions. But uh, you know many times um, it's, it's just better than what you're doing today, right? So that's what drives the business forward and um, improves the business ultimately uh, by understanding and, and those hidden risks uh, that are difficult to interpret with human eye. Um, so let's take a look, look uh, a quick, quick case study that a customer of ours um, that I worked with for the past many years, they're in a global leader in, a, in, a, in the lifetime uh, lifestyle footwear, um, uh, and they were they have retained us to help them improve the controls across the enterprise. We recently finished um, some work for them here in the U.S. Um, in the West Coast, and they also came to one of our events and. Um, in, in San Francisco, and, and we're very, uh, uh, you know, uh, able, able to verify some of the results that they've produced. So basically, the, uh, in a nutshell, what the company does is um, is develops, um, uh, you know, shoes, um, high performance shoes and footwear. Um, it operates um, in four segments. They have domestic wholesale, international wholesale, uh, retail, and e-commerce, uh, which is very traditional today, or very typical today, I should say. For for um, any retailer, right? You're you're you got to be an omni-channel company. Uh, most of our retail organizations are like that. I picked this example because they are uh, challenged, as as most most retailers are in this market, uh, with um, competing with you know the, the organizations with highly di digitalized platforms like Amazon. Um, they also company also operates um, concept stores, 122 and and um, factory outlets and so they have variations and as you might imagine the pricing and supply chain is impacted uh, by that so um, here are some of the use cases that we um, ar arrived at as part of the um, um, the implementation of uh, safe insight um, so we picked out some of the pain points by talking to executive management uh, and looking at some of their historical data that we had access to. So accounts payable, audits, they were using um, third-party audit firms to do recovery audits. The supply chain is very complex, as you might imagine, any retailer that is operating at scale today um, has a global supply chain. Manufacturing, in this case, also part of this organization. So while they're in retail, they also manufacture in China. So you know, there's all kinds of subcontractor challenges, contract challenges in general. And so they wanted us to kind of look at, uh, look at that data and improve um, uh, you know, the relationships with their suppliers, as well as improve the um, the ability to recover um, when there was dispute more accurately and timely. Um, second was around merchandising audits, so being able to look at um, you know pricing models, um, items that were in um, warehouses versus retail, how are they moving, and how was the impact of um, of um, their promotions, media audits, it was also part of this. Uh, freight audits, freight's a big deal. Um, you know, that's uh, uh, and global, it's global businesses today. Freight is a, is a much bigger factor on the financial statement than, than it was even 10 years ago. And then finally, uh, compliance with their contracts, uh, with, with their uh, suppliers. So those were some of the challenges the company was facing uh, where we created a summary of use cases. So again, it's the approach I mentioned earlier. You may have a roadmap already in place. Just let us know where we fit into that roadmap. If you want us to build one, we can help you based on best practices. So you know, that's kind of unique to us. We're more than just a product company. We come from a consulting and professional services background. So at the end of the day, you were able to put this type of a solution together. Um, and this is um, basically a sample because I can't use actual data. So I pulled the samples together. So you can look at AP claims that are open. What's the ratio of claims by certain regions? You can see that uh, Middle East Africa has the highest number of claims um, at 1.33 percentage of their total claims. So now you can go and make um, you know control improvements in that region. It's very useful information for the head of audit um, and finance organization and the trends in the claims. So while we see that in Q2 they peaked in MIA. Uh, Middle East Africa region, but they have come down, and the trend is looking really good. 
because they have implemented uh, SafePass Insight and now they're able to predict risk and bring it down to a lower, lower level. So that was the uh, kind of a dashboard or the final benefit of using SafePass um, and, and merchandising. So now we can see how pricing uh, is impacting um, our merchandise losses. Um, so you can see where the losses are coming from on our merchandise by region in the US. You can drill down, in this case, down to the US. So we have divided US into, uh, let's see, six markets. And within six markets, looks like South Central is uh, pricing errors were really high um, in certain periods, and that's what caused um, our merchandise losses. So we priced the product wrong. Maybe it was uh, the weather. You know, weather is a big deal for these guys and for retailers in general. So you know, it's uh, too hot. People are not buying um, you know sweaters and coats, and if it's too warm, too cold, uh, they're not buying swimsuits, right? So um, so that's really helpful to kind of look at what your merchandising strategy using the raw data you have available in your uh, POS systems, your warehouse systems, again, multiple data sources, and being able to then come up with um, the best um, possible net price. Uh, so you're predicting, one of the examples, use case I mentioned was pricing. So you can predict what pricing will work in which market the best, and you can get to a micro pricing model around regions and seasons and so forth. So excellent way to improve inventory management and pricing, which is where your margin is and which is where your net profit comes from. Um, and then compliance, you know, uh, being able to look at which of the suppliers are uh, compliant to all the companies and scoring that is instead of just looking at you know, hundreds of attributes like shipments on time and so forth, uh, making sure they have workman comp and contracts and pricing. You can start using uh, credit scores from third-party agencies. You can apply compliance to your contracts, quality rates, whatever those factors are. You can start looking at vendor risk um, and supplier risk. Uh, you can look at freight costs over time. Um, so again, you know, this is one example of a customer, but there's many others um, that may be specific to your market that we can do similar um, type of analysis. Uh, so you can see the freight cost ratios here from different suppliers. Um, and then sales by market. Um, so this is coming from your CRM system. Um, you know, also your payable system may contain media versus agencies. So you have uh, spend through third party agencies like um, this organization uh, promotes through, um, you know, uh, channels that teenagers watch to for the young uh, audience. Uh, so you have promotional sites um, through TV advertisements, certainly online advertising through Google and other sites, and then media companies that buy the ads for them. So you can look at agency buys versus direct buys. And in this case, you can see that around the Christmas time, uh, the media spend went up, which is uh, pretty typical. And then uh, as a result of that, agency view was consistent with that. So you can see that some, some purchases are coming from agencies and but it's tracking pretty closely too. So if you saw a change in that, for example, agency spiked but media dropped, you might might, might be concerned about it. Uh, like in this case, you can see the agency's fees high, but uh, media spend is low. So this would be maybe a, a point that you would want to see. Why are they not moving in the same direction? So you know, very helpful information. Again, this is coming from five or ten different systems. You've got the merchandising system in one place. You've got POS. You've got data warehouse, you've got a warehouse system, you've got ERP system also. So you can use Data Probe on the tool we have and scan and discover data across hundreds of systems. Uh, many of those, like I said, the ERPs are already scoped in out of the box. And then you can um, you know, really look at where data can help you improve your business and compete better, generate better, better margins and ultimately give your people a break too so they can go home and home on time instead of uh, sitting till midnight burning the midnight oil uh, trying to get your spreadsheets right. So that's uh, a, a couple of more examples and I'm gonna wrap up. So what it looks like under the covers is basically we can find duplicate invoices. Um, for example, to prevent risk, this is just sample data as I said before. You can find uh, unusual changes to supplier accounts and you can therefore use that data to predict uh, the risk of actually uh, materializing uh, that event. 
Um, the way it works is I won't get into too much of a setup, but just so you know that there's product behind all this. This is the metadata source, as I mentioned before, this is where your data discovery comes in. So you can go in and set up your data sources. It takes a few minutes to set up, up. your DBA can do that or whoever is, understands that database or data source can set that up. Uh, and then once that is authorized, um, you'll be able to um, start discovering the data, connecting it through objects like these. Uh, so this is objects, for example, uh, I'm a finance guy, so from my perspective, it's more GL type data or purchasing supplier data. So this has now been pulled in and modified and set up. So now you don't have to worry about all those scripting and extraction and all that will be automated. Um, and then once the automated um, scheduler is running, you can get uh, reports of snapshot of that data uh, through the metadata that we talked about earlier. And from there, you can uh, assign um, alerts and workflows to keep people in the organizations. This is how you make analytics work for your organization, um, taking that raw data, the big data, turning into useful analytics, and then sharing it with people that have been authorized to take decisions on behalf of the company like your finance organization on uh, journal entries, your procurement organization on suppliers, um, your customer organization on credits, et cetera, et cetera. Many examples we can go through. Um, and ultimately, it's all automated through workflows where you have a complete audit trails. So your auditors are happy too because they can see all this information and see how the company's operating the controls in real world. And many times our customers use this for SOX as well. So you can apply that to your SOX and lower the burden of SOX management. So your full incident reports, who approved what risk and wh where it is in the in the bucket. So essentially what we're telling you to move from, um, you know, a standard, uh, today's standard-based controls, which is, um, you know, controls that may be embedded into your processes to a more advanced, safe pass enabled approach that is based on fuzzy logic and predictive analytics, which will help you ultimately get your vision for 2020 um, and help you get to your goals faster. Uh, and more successfully. So that's basically the the end of the presentation. Emma, I think I've used up almost all the time today. Do you have any questions in the last few minutes? Yes, hi everybody. Yes, we have had a few questions come in. Um, first of all, how long does it take to deploy? Ah, so that's always a good question to ask. Uh, I think it depends on scope, obviously. So we'd like to understand you know, what else is going on in the organization what is your objective and so forth. But typically we would say, don't start with a very large project, start with a, maybe a CRP, a small project, um, to pick a few data sources, a few business problems, like we showed you here with uh, with, uh, with this uh, retailer and the footwear retailer. And uh, they took about um, six to eight weeks to get up and running. So that's a good um, you know, success uh, for us is when you can get everything from data to results and actions within um, six to eight weeks. Okay. Uh, does your solution come with data protection capabilities? Absolutely. In this day and age, we are completely SOC 1, SOC 2 certified, and we provide GDPR assurances for our customers in Europe, and certainly with now with CCPA here in California. So yeah, absolutely, that's one of the utmost um, important things for us. We actually have a data governor capability um, that we're announcing for Data Probe that will enable us to, um, our customers to really mark down to the object attribute level, um, you know, what is the sensitivity of data, whether it's sensitive for a specific regulations, internal, et cetera, and scramble that data or, or secure that. So that's an excellent question. We're spending a lot of time being in the, in the data protection business, really in the safeguarding of our customers is very important to us. Okay, and finally, what would you say are the three main goals you can accomplish with an analytic solution like this? Yeah, again, there's so many that I can think of, but in the limited time we have, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, start with something that really has a big value for the enterprise. So, uh, in my experience, the area that is most interesting to our customers and where we have the highest, I guess, hidden risk is the procure to pay cycle. I gave you some examples of where this uh, client of ours. Um, had concerns around um, spending and contracts and so forth. So I think that's a good place to start. You can probably come up with three areas within your procure to pay cycle. Uh, if you had any kind of major finding on the record to report cycle, um, you know, uh, if there's just you know bottlenecks in your 
financial reporting that's impacting decision making. That's another really important area. If you are changing your customer service model, and so, so that's a third area I would say. So it just depends what's happening in your enterprise. Um, you know, again, business models are very so different. But those are three obvious areas that I would start with, and then uh, drill into details. Thank you, Emma. That's I think all the time we have today, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, uh, we've come to the end of the session. So I just want to thank you all for joining today. And if you would like a further discussion around Safe Insight or any of our other solutions, then you can contact me, Emma, here at SafePaz, and you can uh, follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter and read about all our updates and keep up to date with our latest happenings and obviously our educational content that's out there. So yeah, I think that's all. So we hope to see you all again uh, next month, if not in Colorado at the Rocky Mountain, um, Rocky Mountain Oracle User Group, then at our next webinar. Thank you okay. and goodbye.